for welcome to the first Frackbusters New York teach-in, the first of what we hope will be many teach-ins around the great state of New York on this subject that is uh, concerning and worrying and terrifying and energizing so many people across the state. I would urge you to focus through all the conversation that we'll be having through the presentations and the discussions that we'll be having to try to zero in on what I think is the common thread running through all of this. And that is, what are we who want to prohibit fracking anywhere in New York? What are we going to do that's different from what we've done on corporate invasion issue after issue after issue in the past that hasn't worked? Once we begin to internalize our analysis of how the deck is stacked and how history, what history has us, how history has brought us to this place, into this revolting predicament, which I think is what Art Carney used to say on the Jackie Gleason, how do we get into this revolting predicament? The three things I'm going to talk about, the three topics in my 30 minutes, will be, one, how people's history tells us that we've got to rip this a struggle out of the regulatory and administrative structure of law. We've got to rip this struggle out of the Department of Environmental Conservation and why that is necessary, why that is true. Secondly, wh why we're choosing to write our own law and push that law and present that law to our officials and to people across the state and why that law is a criminalizing law, why that law criminalizes fracking, the corporate frackers, and all related fracking activities. And third, I'm going to lay out my sense, and the frackbuster sense, it's an early stage, but how we see the next six months to a year playing out, how we're going to drive this across the state. So first, how, what is it about people's history that, what, what does people's history tell us about regulatory administrative law? about agencies like the DEC, about the whole environmental impact process, the degeists and all that stuff. I mean, I assume you're all familiar with all those silly terms. <laughs> what it tells us is that the regulatory administrative law structure, which was be begun to put in place 100 years ago, more than 100 years ago, and beginning in 1900 or so, in this state and around the country, is the result of the failures of people's struggles to make decision-making over, over stuff that counts. There was struggles all through the 19th century to, to try to stop the robber barons from imposing their will on the whole country. We lost. I mean, people like us who were resisting all of that lost. It was a valiant struggle covering generations and covering decades, but we lost. By 1900, the corporate state was in place. And what they, the, the corporate winners put into place were among other things, was this regulatory administrative structure, the regulatory agency, starting with the Interstate Commerce Commission, which was 1887, and then others in the 1900s. Sort of the whole progress, so-called progressive agenda was a regulatory administrative law agenda. It was about accepting and embracing the realities that had been accomplished, the private ordering of economic decision making, that the corporate class would make the decisions over where they would invest our money, what technologies they would choose, how they would organize production of ma and manufacturing, how they would organize work, how they would in fact wield the law of our state and of the nation against us. That was done by 1900. And so what the, the, the sort of progress, so-called misnamed progressive era was all about was setting up these structures, these regulatory administrative structures that would only be about dealing with the impacts, mitigating the impacts, lessening the abuses, right? Um, they did nothing to change the total victory over the law, the constitutionalizing of the business corporation, the tying of the hands of our municipal corporations, stripped of any governing authority, essentially concentrating governance in the hands of a corporate board and backing them with the law of the state and the law of the nation. So that 
when in fact we get to the New Deal, which was the, the uh, epitome of the regulatory administrative state with the Securities and Exchange Commission and the National Labor Relations Act and the uh, Comptroller of the Currency and all these regulatory bodies, the Food and Drug Administration, which came a little earlier. None of that provided any ability for people resisting particular to challenge that history. Because when you get into the regulatory agencies of the 30s and 40s and 50s and then the environmental laws of the 60s and 70s and 80s on a federal and a state level, the corporation had already, the business corporation had already been constitutionalized. It had been wrapped in the constitution. The municipal corporation had been stripped of any real governing authority. Um, the, the issue of the, the, the question of who made the decisions, whether they were going to be public or private, had been settled. My whole generation, and I see other gray hair in here, so I say, for the gray haired people, our generation has been channeled into these agencies on issue after issue. You know, think of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the, uh, the, to the, the, the toxic substance laws, the federal laws and state laws on toxics. They all, the, the, uh, the energy commissions, they all set up the same kind of a process, channeling us into an arena where the deck is stacked. You know, and it's a, you know, the bigger picture, the, the state is not neutral, the United States is not neutral in any of these realms, but particularly in the regulatory administrative law, the deck is stacked. Let me talk about that specifically for a minute, sort of compare the, what happens in a regulatory administrative arena and what happens in, say, just out of the blue, a criminal arena, right? First of all, in the regulatory arena, passion and emotion is not allowed because it's all about so-called the science and the facts. And you can't, we can't question the history of the corporation, you know, that, that we, once we get into the regulatory arena, the corporate lawyers are sitting there as participants, not as defendants, right? They're sitting there as participants with all this authority, the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment, backed by all of that. The only issue on the table is are, these imp are the harms that, we, that people can predict powerful enough that they need to be mitigated a little bit? And how much is it going to cost to mitigate them? And is that feasible or practicable? That's all that it's about. And what we're left with, well, can we make this decision a little less bad? Can we, can we put the wellheads, you know, the, 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 this from the wellheads of, you know, a few hundred yards distant? Can we put the wells a little further away from the aquifers? You know, can we have higher fences, deeper ponds, bigger dams? You know, all that stuff. It's not about what do we want? A lot of groups go out and they hire hydrologists and they hire toxic sci chemical scientists and they hire geologists, spending hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to debate you know, with the corporations, hydrologists and geologists and, 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 uh, and toxic scientists, you know, to debate the minutia of how much we're going to get poisoned, how much our communities are going to, you know, all that stuff. From the American Revolution, we have a theory of government in this country. It's not practice, but we have the theory, and that is all sovereign authority is in the hands of the people. All governing authority comes from the people. We are the legitimating source of governing authority in this country. We go into the regulatory administrative arenas, we have no authority, we just talk about the geology and the hydrology, that's it. We say to the, to the hearing officer, we want, to, we want to challenge and contest the notion that the corporation is, business corporation is wrapped in the 14th Amendment. He says, I have nothing to do with that. That's, that's outside the purview of these hearings. It's, it's not relevant. We want to talk about broad and total energy policy in the state of New York. That's not relevant. You can't talk about that here. You can't talk about that here. You can't talk about that. You want to talk geology and hydrology? We'll talk about that. So we decided in, 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 in SPAN, our group in Ulster and Green Counties, and then in Frack Busters, New York, that we're going to rip this whole mess, this whole process, out of that realm. That's not about us. That's not about sovereignty. And we're going to take it. We're going to force it. We're going to compel it. We're going to drive it into the arenas of sovereignty across the state. And what is the primary arena of sovereignty in New York State? It's our state legislature. Now, I have no illusion that our New York State legislature, about the New York State legislature, it's a tyranny. It's run by, you know, its leaders. The, our, our legislators are colonized. The election process is, is um, a mess, as you know, in terms of who puts the money up, who frames the issues, and all of that. 
But theoretically, in terms of its history, in terms of its theory, it's a whole other world from the regulatory administrative process. It is about who decides. It is about making law. The whole history of lawmaking, going back before time runneth into immemorial, is when a community decides to discourage certain anti-social behavior, it passes a law. Right? It doesn't call in the geologists and the hydrologists and everything to debate. Or, it says X, Y, Z behavior will be illegal and we will establish penalties at a deterrent level, level. And any person or institution or corporation that is found guilty of committing these acts will be punished. You know, it is the, 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 the most theoretically clear approach. It is the most traditional approach. It is, you could say, it's a conservative approach. It's what societies have been doing for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so we've decided to say, since it, it's pretty clear from, from talking with, and, and our groups are made up of people from many groups all over the state who have come, risen up to, to challenge the idea of fracking, towards prohibiting it, not making it less bad, prohibiting and preventing, that we would move the struggle into the legislature and into all arenas, including local legislatures, including the body politic, including you know, the media, whatever it is, and unite around the concept that corporate fracking is criminal behavior. We, the, our law declares it a class C felony, right? And any person or, or entity that engages in, in fracking, in fracking related activities such as using water to frack in Pennsylvania even, or importing frack waste from other states into this country, into this state, uh, is guilty of a criminal act. Um, possession of fracking paraphernalia <laughs> will be a, is a penalty, right? Is that logical or what? Right? Tr you know, trying to induce other people to frack. <laughs> you know, okay. So, so for, I, I wanted to, I wanted with that as an introduction. I want to talk a little bit about the the draft bill that we have, which we'll make available online and you know, send it all around and you can see it for yourself. In section one we say the people of New York State declare that fracking technology for the purpose of extracting natural gas or oil or water or for any other purpose is destructive to the public health, is destructive to the environment, community, economic stability and jobs and then we define it in a political terms, is destructive to representative government, is destructive to the fundamental integrity of the body politic. So we're not just talking about technological stuff, we're talking about this fracking above ground, if you could put it that way, to the body politic. Um, we then define uh, um, uh, corporation, we define and we define um, and we move on to declaring the people of New York State to protect the health, safety, welfare of all species, including humans, along with the lands, waters, communities, and economies of New York, to protect existing industry, businesses, and jobs, to ensure the viability of industry, businesses, and jobs in the future, declare fracking and all related activities that enable or are related to be fracking to be criminal offenses. Uh, and then we, we specify, we list a bunch of things down. Um, we say it's a class fee, C felony, for class C felony con convictions of fracking and fracking related activity, the minimum fine for individuals is $1 million per offense. For corporations, um, uh, corporate officers and board members convicted of, of fracking and fracking related activity shall be fined a minimum, minimum of $1 million per offense. A separate offense shall arise for each day or portion thereof in which any violation of the law occurs. We then specify uh, about the culpability of corporate officers and directors. We, we, we instruct the courts that if a corporation is found guilty of fracking, 
it shall be assumed that the high management officers of the corporation, including the directors, knew and understood what was going on and therefore had to have knowledge and therefore had ordered it to go on, and they are culpable and guilty, and therefore we are piercing the corporate shield so that, in fact, the officers of the corporation must uh, be, be sentenced to jail just like a, an individual. We also go a step further and we say that if any corporation of any description that has been chartered in New York State and chartered by New York State is found guilty of fracking or fracking related activity, the, state of, the New York State Attorney General shall immediately commence charter revocation proceedings. All right? That is his duty under the law. Because it is, you know, it's not talked about much these days, but it was big news back in the 19th century because many, many people, people like us, fought for it across the state and across the United States to perfect the theory. We lost, but we got the theory. The theory is our state officials may not create entities like business corporations that cause harm. Because incorporation is a privilege. The state officials have no authority to create an entity to cause harm and deny us our standing before the law, to deny us our ability to govern ourselves. That interfere, that trample upon our sovereign authority to govern ourselves. So when the state create cause, you know, uh, uh, creates a corporation that is guilty, found guilty of criminal offense, of felony, the attorney general must act to, to cut that cancer out of the body politic. Similarly, if a corporation is chartered in another state, it's called a foreign corporation. If it's a foreign corporation is found guilty of fracking, the attorney general must revoke their, what's called a certificate of authority to operate in New York State. Why should New York State allow a foreign corporation to operate, to do business in New York State when it is causing harm and trampling upon our sovereign authority? Uh, we are also, uh, the law is only three pages long, it's a work in progress, but it, it's easy reading. The, we're also charging New York State officials that should this law be challenged in the United States courts or New York courts, New York State elected officials and appointed officials shall defend this law with diligence, vigor, persistence, and determination, et cetera, et cetera. And that they must consult with, in fact, the, 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 people, who, the people of the state and how they do that. And they must appeal uh, decisions, losing decisions to the to next level courts. So it's a pretty big leap, but it's a, lo a lo logical and rational leap. Imagine all the hours, all the time, all the energy and resources and hope up to now that the people of New York have invested into the DEC process, into the Delaware River Basin Commission, another regulatory agency process. Uh, all the time, all the energy, the money that we spend hiring lawyers and all of that, collecting data, going in there. And we go in there with this attitude that we're supplicants, that we, the sovereign people, are supplicants. We're asking them, please, please, don't harm us so much. We want, to make you, we want you to make it a little less bad. That's why this is all about us. It's not about the corporations. It's not about Cuomo and the politicians. It's not about the big environmental groups that have sold us out. It's about how we are redefining who we are. To say, we are going to rip this struggle and rip ourselves. We're going to wean ourselves from being supplicants. And we're going to smash, we're going to run, we're going to drive into all the different arenas of sovereignty, the places where the decisions are really made, even though we know those are still stack decks. We know the state of New York is not neutral on this. You know, we know what the governor wants. We know what the, the, the corporate class in New York State wants. We know that at the moment the corporate directors decided that they, were going to, they wanted to frack New York, we know what the reality was. We know municipal corporations had been disabled. That happened 100 years ago. We know that business corporations had been privileged and wrapped in the com Constitution. That happened 100 years ago. We know that the number one value in this country, the number one value in this country is economic growth endless more, that without that, everything contracts, right? Uh, there are no jobs, everybody's freezing and starving, unemployed in the dark, right? Uh, everything ends. And the single most important thing 
that drives endless more, that drives economic growth is what? Endless energy growth. And so we know across the state and in other states where people get involved in energy struggles, we know that when people stand up and say, we don't want this because it's stupid, it's destructive, it's uneconomical, it's an invasion, it's a usurpation, all that stuff, right away we're taking on the whole corporate class. And so we know we make ourselves vulnerable right away to say, oh, you anti-frackers, you're anti-job, you're anti-worker, you're anti-progress, right? you're anti-liberty and freedom, you're anti-American, you're treasonous, you're against energy independence, but, you know, all that work has been done. So they set up their non, little non-profit corporations. Right away, each of them has 10 and 20 and 30 million dollars so they can advertise on radio and television and NPR and their billboards and the magazines. You know, what do we have? We don't have a lot of money. We don't have raw political power, but we have people. And we have passion and emotion. I mean, that's what drives elections. That's what drives public issues. The passion and emotion that are out of order in the DEC, that are out of order in the NRC, that are out of order in the Securities and Exchange Commission, in all those regulatory agencies, there's no place for passion and emotion. There's no pa place for, what, for our hopes and aspirations. In the body politic, in all the public arenas, and particularly in the legislature, you know, that's, those, are, those are advantages. Our bill does not, it, it holds back a little bit. It's actually a little, very conservative at this point. It doesn't challenge overtly sort of the whole corrupt history of the last couple hundred years of private decision making. It doesn't challenge directly yet the particular usurpations about business corporations that have been written into law, that corporations have First Amendment and Sixth Amendment and Eighth Amendment and Fourteenth Amendment, due process and equal protection and all of that stuff. It doesn't overtly. But it opens the door to this history less. Let me, in, in five minutes, give a little summary of, of how, how we could move from here. What happens? Well, as I said before, I think that people around the state who have already come to their own decision, they've, people across the state have read all the technical data, they've studied this, they've said, we don't want to be fracked. We want to prohibit fracking in New York State. Right now, we're all splintered. You know, there's this, this bill for, for this, and there's this bill for water, and this bill for waste, and then this bill for that. We, we have a, a so-called ban bill on the table. Is it a ban? Is it not a ban? What, what would happen if, if Senator Villa's bill, as currently written, which he calls a ban bill, if that's enacted? Would that really stop and prevent fracking in New York State? Would it prevent the use of water for fracking in Pennsylvania? Would it prevent the import of frack wastes from other states to here? Would it do anything with the Delaware River Basin Commission? Would it in, do anything to the fracking above ground? You know, would it begin to change the against corporate fracking and all the paraphernalia and all the re related activities? We don't want corporate frackers in our state, and this one is going to deal with the chemicals, and this is one going to deal with the distance from the wellhead to the school, and this one's going to deal with this and that. We don't have to bother with all that because we have one size fits all. It will not happen in the state of New York. This struggle, in my opinion, it's not about the Chesapeake Energy Corporation, and it's not about the Goldman Sachs Corporation that's putting up the money, and it's not about the, uh, the largest law firms in the world that are working for the Chesapeake Corporation and the Mobile Corporation and the other corporations. It's not about Governor Cuomo. It's not about the, the NRDC. This is about us. It's about us, the people of New York, and our families and our communities and our children and their children, and the other species who can't speak for themselves, and the lakes and the rivers and trees, you know, that, are, that, that can't speak for themselves, that can't act for themselves. Do we want to continue down a path that we all know, we're looking at the gray hair in this room, I'm sure we've all been involved in environmental impact statements, we've all been petitioned our DEC, and we've, we've asked our senators and, 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 and assemblymen to please, you know, do a little less harm. Do we want to continue that? which hasn't gotten us what we wanted in the past? Or do we want to go where we were destined to go, 
where the people struggles over the last three and four or five hundred years where people have struggled for the authority to make the decisions that shape our communities. You know, for the authority to govern, not to deal with, you know, they'll leave us the trivia, but the real decision making, what are we going to do for energy in this state? How are we going to do it? You know, how are we going to do it that's equitable? How can we do it that, that, that's consistent with preserving, protecting the, the earth, that's consistent with earth laws? All right? We can't do that in the DEC. We can do it if we take the struggle, our struggle into our legislative body, understanding that, of course, our legislative bodies are stacked decks. And we're just going to have to figure that out. And I'll close by giving one example. When we met with Senator Vila and his, and his uh, legal aide the other week, and they, they have the bill and they've been talking about it. And one of the things that the, the aide said, he says, well, if we did this, of course, the New York Legislature Bill Writing Commission wouldn't accept a lot of these premises and language and all of that. And I said, of course they wouldn't. <coughs> you know, we ha I never heard of the Bill Writing Commission. <laughs> I'm not surprised there is a bill writing commission. I'm sure there are 40 other things in there because they've had, in New York State alone, 100 years at least to prepare the groundwork, to, to create all the commissions, to make their rules, to enable the speaker and the leaders of the assembly and the, and the Senate to, to act as tyrants, you know, to, to, to frame the elections, to frame, you know, to control what happens in Albany. So we figure, of course, there'll be all this stuff. Of course, they're going to throw out, it's, it's unconstitutional, it's this, it's that, it's going to throw billions of people. We, we'll be, you know, what are we, born yesterday? Of course, we know that's going to happen. We'll prepare for it, but we'll be on the offensive. And in fact, as we saw in dealing with the, the senator, when we first came in with this bill, it freaked him out. It put him on the defensive. He didn't know what to make of it, you know? That's a wonderful feeling after all these years, isn't it? <laughs> We're ought to, to take the offensive. And I think, you know, as a model for us, that's where we need to go. Our job as people in New York State who want to prohibit and prevent fracking by criminalizing it, right, who want to take charge over our energy policy and not leave it to these hacks and these corporations and these invaders and these corporations, it's our job to force, to compel our legislators, the corporate leaders, the large environmental groups, whatever, our job to compel them to bring them to our agenda. It's not our job to succumb to their agenda. We are supposed that our job is to compel them to do what we want to do. And this is a, this is a work in progress, this criminalization bill. It can be improved. As more people get involved, as more, you know, all the smart, good energy, the people around the state will perfect it. But meanwhile, we believe at Frack Busters and in SPAN that this is an appropriate vehicle to really turn the struggle upside down for us across the state to take the offensive, to drive this into the legislature, totally change the conversation, and in fact, within a year or two, to, en to enact this, and meanwhile, to turn the whole state upside down so that we're calling the shots and not the politicians and the corporations. Thank you very much. Yeah.